<laughs> all right, April is uh, Donate Life Month, and today is Living Donor Day, a day to honor all living donors for their life saving generosity. Yeah, and one Westchester County man is a testament of how anyone can make a difference. Now, to prove you can live a normal life with just one kidney, he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. So please welcome kidney donor Steve Wilson and Dr. Joseph Pizzo, Del Pizzo, a urologist and kidney donor surgeon at New York Presbyterian and a professor of surgery at Weill Cornell Medicine. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. All right, Thank first, you. Steve, we'll begin with you. First of all, congratulations on your huge climb. Thank you very much. Yeah, you Thanks. did this about a month ago. So tell us what really inspired you to take this trek. Sure, yeah, we did it. We, we summited on March 10th uh, on World Kidney Day. Uh, but after I donated in February of 2020, I became heavily involved with an organization called Kidney Donor Athletes. And we're a diverse organization uh, of like-minded, active people. But we have one commonality, and that is we all are living donors. Mm -hmm. So during COVID, we couldn't get together, and we'd have, you know, we'd have Zoom happy hours and Zoom dinners, and we had Zoom Yahtzee tournaments. And one day during a Yahtzee tournament, you know, we, we started talking, and we wanted to do something that would really bring, uh, bring to the forefront, you know, the importance of living kidney donation. And somebody suggested... Why don't we climb Kilimanjaro as a group? And that's how it was born and uh, took us about two years to plan. Uh, but uh, we did uh, we did summit 22 people, uh, made the trek, and we summited on March 10th, World Kidney Day. That is incredible. Congratulations to, to Thank both you of you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Steve, why did you become a, decide to become a living donor? Yeah, great question. I, I saw a, you know, I, I've always had a desire to help people and just you know do what you can, contribute what you can to the world. Uh, and I saw a post from a friend of mine. His daughter had just received a life-saving uh, kidney transplant. I saw this post in June of 2019, prior to going on a long bike ride. And I just thought I was inspired. I said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I, I want to be like this woman, but I don't know anybody that needs a kidney. So I then found out, you know, you, there were lots of people, I knew there were lots of people that needed kidneys. I just didn't know any of them. Sure. But I found out that, you know, being a non-directed donor is a very common thing or becoming more common, I should say. And it's actually really, it's, it's really efficient and effective because a non-directed donor can start something called a kidney chain, whereby more than one person can receive a kidney. So in my chain, we had three people and that's really what, uh, what inspired it all. Oh, that's incredible. So incredible. Dr. Del Pizzo, um, can you, you're actually Steve's doctor. So That's right. we want you to touch on that, but also um, what is really a living donor? And can you be specific about what people can actually donate as a living donor? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, Steve, happy Living Donor Day and congratulations Thank on the trek. It was great to hear about it and good to see you again. Um, you know, that. a lot of people are under the, the misconception that, a live, that you can only donate um, once you've passed away. And it's the thing that you check on the back of your driver's license and if you want to be an organ donor or not. But the truth is, is that you can donate uh, as a living donor. The most common organ that is donated is a kidney, like Steve did. Uh, you can also donate part of your liver uh, and uh, one or part of your lung, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. But by far and away, the most common living donor patient is someone who's going to donate a kidney, like Steve did a couple of years ago. Well, hopefully people are, are listening to this and thinking about this, but I'm sure that the question is, what are the risks that are involved with actual organ donation? Well, long term, it's minimal. I mean, I'm speaking mostly about kidney donation because mm -hmm. that's the most common and what I put is what in my practice is in. Um, but other than the risks of surgery, which are low, and the incidence of, of complications is very low, you know, we wouldn't let Steve or anyone else donate a kidney if it was going to put them at a significant long term health risk. So the long term health risks of donating a kidney are very low. So, Steve, this question is for you. What would you say to people out there who may be interested in being a living donor but may still be on the fence right now? Yeah, I guess the first, the first piece of advice, I'd tell them to contact the, uh, the National Kidney Registry, NKR.org, and on that site you can learn everything and more you've ever wanted to know about being a, a living donor. Uh, you want to contact a great hospital, which is what I did which was a, a New York Presbyterian Wild Cornell. And of course, you got to get a top-notch doctor. <laughs> and uh, I, I had what I consider to be the best, I, and I mean that. But uh, that's, and then just really, you know, sit down and, and do some research yourself. Speak to people that have done it. You can certainly give anybody my email. I'd be happy to discuss it with anybody. Uh, but it's not for everybody. It's, it's certainly not for everybody, but if it's something you consider, that's how I'd start. 
Well, you have certainly answered a lot of questions and probably inspired so many people as a result of your story. Doctor, let me ask you this. Talk about the actual need for organ donors. How many people right now, as of today, are out there waiting for one of these life-saving donations? Yeah, it's a great question. For a long time, living donation was a much underutilized resource because at one time, there's over 100,000 people in our country waiting for an organ transplant. And 90% of those are typically waiting for a kidney transplant. So it's a very common thing. It's a big health problem that we have. And I just want to emphasize that someone like Steve, you know, didn't just help the person who got his kidney. Steve also helped 100,000 people who are on the list who don't have a living donor. Mm -hmm. So when Steve's recipient came off the list, that moves everybody up right. on the list. So he right. had the living donors help more than just the person they're directly helping. They indirectly help tens of thousands, and they're the real hero in this, uh, this story. I, I can't emphasize that enough. I like how you put it in perspective that way. It's kind of like a trickle-down yeah. effect. So, Steve, you've done Mount Kilimanjaro. What's next? <laughs> What's next is October of this year, I will be participating with my two sons in the uh, Hawaiian Ironman World Championships. Oh, wow. Which is, is a dream come true with my two boys and uh, looking very forward to it. Oh. Nice. Talk about an inspiration. Right. We, got it. We, need, we need a new word for you. Uh, congratulations. Uh, good, good luck with everything. We look forward to hearing from you. Hope we can have you back. That's for sure to see how that goes. And uh, thank you mo so much for, for being with us. And, and for Thank you very much. Doing. Appreciate it. Thanks. All thank right, you. Take care. take care, Steve. Good to see you again. Nice Doctor, to see you. Thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> yep, see you. Okay, bye. Oh my gosh! Right, right. It doesn't and stop. Just for incredible. Him. Just steep. incredible, and just how that need is out there, yeah. and how one person helps another really helps another.